<laughs> so um, this practice is about moderation. And um, if you want to practice that straight away, grab a block. It might be useful, uh, not essential though. We begin lying down on the backs. So get yourself to that comfortable spot. As you come to lie down on your back, stepping the feet down onto the mat. Now I will be taking um, my socks off straight away. Upper body, not so important if your space is cool. But as you step the feet down onto the mat, I would ask you to really feel the feet touching the ground. The feet are quite gently touching here because we're not really standing. We're only placing the feet down and there's only light weight into the feet. So you might lift and lower your toes a few times and feel into the touch of the feet to the floor. You can allow yourself to rest here. Let your breath flow quite naturally for now. The topic of uh, moderation is taken from another yama and that is uh, Brahmacharya. So um, guidelines for daily living. Brahmacharya used to be translated into celibacy. Um, in our modern day and age, uh, we have enough examples that that is not really working. So we decided to rephrase the idea and rather turn it into moderation, which makes much more sense in our modern world. And so you can practice today with moderation in accordance to how you're feeling, as we usually do. But you might also notice uh, traits of the mind that aren't quite moderate, as the mind is oftentimes taking you into self-doubt, it wanders, struggle concentrating. So it is basically as usual, we observe ourselves, but with the thought of moderation. And you might take that thought away with you into your day as well. So while you're resting here now, as you breathe in, tilt the pelvis so that your back is flattening down onto the floor and you can actually lightly press into the mat. And when you're breathing out, let your pelvis drop back into neutral and there's a little gap in the lower back towards the floor. We'll do that a few times. On the inhale, tilting the pelvis so the spine flattens out. On the exhale, releasing that into its natural curve. Now keep that flowing for a few more breaths in your own time. It's a very small movement. The hips are staying on the floor, so is the buttocks. And we're just tilting our pelvis forward and back. We'll start by creating a little bit of inner warmth and strength. It's more so mobilization of the lower part of the spine as well as the pelvis itself. You can have your arms as close down by the side as you like, as you begin to increase that movement. And maybe now the hips are lifting, and then as you're raising out the lower spine back into neutral. You always start with the pelvic tilt, and then maybe lifting a little bit more, and rolling back down onto the floor as you're raising out. So continue that, and your lift of the hips might increase. And as you focus on all that is going on for yourself, you decide how far do you feel you want to take that. And always engaging the core lightly when you're rolling back down as we release the spine a vertebra at a time. Go for one more round.
And once you've landed your spine down, let the arms gently roll open. And as you inhale, rolling your head to one side, try not to lift the head, just rolling. As you're breathing out, roll it to center. On the inhale, rolling the head to the other side. Exhaling to center. Repeating once more to each side. Once you've found your center, do the same with your knees. As you breathe in, rolling them to one side without looking for an outcome. And engage your core as you breathe out to help the knees come to center. On the inhale, now roll the knees to the other side. Engage your core as you breathe out and lift knees to center. As you repeat once more to each side. And then you can choose to continue, but you might also choose to roll your head either the same side or the opposite side of your knees. Still using your core to center yourself and only rolling the head rather than lifting. When you then feel balanced, left and right side evenly, come back into the center to pause. The arms will come a little bit closer down by the side. Your feet are firmly on the floor. We'll return back to the rolling of the spine or bridge. But there's an extra option now. As you breathe in to tilt and maybe lift, the arms can lift all the way up over the head onto the floor. And when you're breathing out, you're still using your inner strength, releasing the spine down and the arms down. So continue with the arms if that feels good. Otherwise, lifting and lowering through the spine. So on the inhale, the arms are lifting over the head as the hips are reaching up. And the arms lower slowly in accordance to your breath as you roll the spine down on the exhale. Continue for two more. And then once you have completed, your hips have landed to the mat. Let the arms roll gently open, but lift your knees now over your chest. You can always step back to the first version if things are a little bit too strong. As you inhale, let your knees roll to one side. Head can roll to if you feel this way. And as you breathe out, the core engages of bringing knees to center. On the inhale, take your knees to the other side, maybe rolling the head. On the exhale, draw yourself into center. Repeat a couple more times to each side. And as you might notice in my demonstrations, I have chosen not to bring the knees towards the floor. I rather keep my shoulders on the ground and a safe movement with that for my neck. But your range of movement might be much greater than mine. So noticing where you can apply moderation to gain more benefits from the movement. When you completed bringing your knees to center and then giving the knees a good squeeze in. If you like on the hour bus, lift your nose to your knees. And then relax the upper body back down. There's a usual offering of rolling from side to side to massage, release the back. And that that I always offer as well. You can roll over to your side to come sit, or you can choose 
to rock over the full length of the spine a few times, then coming up to sit. As um, I don't have an end of the mat I could roll up from where I sit, I will use a block, but um, please feel free to use the rolled up end of your mat, simply because that leaves you a tad bit lower and that might be beneficial for the practice. Placing your hands down upon your uh, thighs or knees, lifting up all the way through the spine and if you like you can place the hands in shin or gyan mudra shin mudra is palms down gyan mudra is palms upwards i prefer the second only because it leaves my shoulders more open at the front you can close the eyes if you like we will continue our practice with pranayama or breathing practice this is called a resetting breath. If there's parts of this technique uh, that don't work for you, and there well and truly could be parts, I will explain the breath first. So before we start, we'll exhale to empty our lungs. We'll breathe in through the nose for a count of four. Then we will hold the breath inside of the body for a count of seven. And we breathe out through pursed lips, creating a, a whooshy sound for a count of eight. That concludes with natural breathing before we start another round. So I will guide you through this. If the holding of the breath is too long, some of the counts are too long, you know to modify that to make it suitable for yourself. So please notice sensations as you might follow the instructions. Let's begin by emptying the lungs. Inhaling for four, three, two, one. Hold the breath, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Breathing out through pursed lips for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and letting that go, natural breathing. Emptying the lungs before the next round. Inhaling through the nose for four, three, two, one, hold the breath, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one out of purse lips for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and rest your breath. Natural breathing. Repeat that for another two rounds as we empty our lungs, inhaling through the nose for four, three, two, one. Hold seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Out from pursed lips. Three, two, one, and natural breathing to pause. Last round, let's empty the lungs. Inhale through the nose for four. Three, two, one. Holding the breath, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And out of pursed lips for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Coming back to natural breathing. Noticing what or if that practice had an effect. And then release your mudra and place the hands close onto your knees. We stay in this position. And when you're next exhaling, draw your right shoulder forward and down and start to look over your left. Breathing in as you sit up tall. 
And then the left shoulder moves forward and down while you're turning your gaze over the right. Inhaling, lifting to center. Exhaling, right shoulder forward and down as you turn to look over the left. Inhaling, sitting upright. And once more with your left shoulder as you're breathing out. On the inhale, coming back into center. Let your fingertips now step down behind you on the mat. Squeeze your shoulder blades together and lift from your sternum or your heart. If your neck is feeling good, protract the chin and gently guide the head backwards. Not essential, but keep a lift of your heart as you breathe to widen the rib cage at the front. When your next out breath comes, start with a light rounding of the lower back as you lift from behind, place the hands down in front and do the opposite as you let your hands walk or slide forward and coming to soften down into a seated forward bend. This is also a way of bowing down and I like to see that as a humbling gesture towards all that that is much greater than us and the learning that we do on our mats as we dedicate the time. Walking the hands back in as you come to sit and changing the cross of the legs. You can place your hands back to where we begin in the first round, so hands towards the knees. If the first movements were deep enough, simply repeat them. If you want to take it further, placing your right hand down in front, maybe leaning all the way down, but still turning the hip to look over your left shoulder. And as you breathe in, rise back up to a straight seated position. As you breathe out, the right hand or arm might lower as you look over the opposite shoulder. Inhale as you lift to sit. Exhale as you lean to twist. Inhale, sit. Exhale, twist. Repeating once more to each side in accordance with the flow of your breathing. When we come back to sit, bring the hands back behind, unless you would like to deepen the back bend. In that case, please remove what you have been sitting on and rather place the hands all the way flat fingers forward or stepping onto fists. If you want to stay seated, stay right there. Otherwise, step your feet out in front at about hip distance. The seated back bend is possible from this place as well. However, if you feel the energy is there, lift your hips up for a tabletop. Head can go back or you can look forward toward the knees. Even if you are seated, lift the right leg and place your ankle to the thigh, letting the knee roll open. If you're in the tabletop, squeeze your hips up. And then very slowly trying to land the hips to the mat, actively flexing the foot that you placed up there. Walk your fingertips in and bring your heart closer towards your shin, aiming for a bit of a stretch here in the figure four seated. While you lean back onto your hands or your fists, step the right foot back down. You know what's coming. Let's take a breath in, lifting the hips, gaze back or to the knees, and then extending the left leg up, ankle to the thigh, knee falls open, we're squeezing the hips up, 
and then gently lowering them back down onto the mat. Active flexion in the foot up there to protect your knee joint and stepping your fingertips in to lift your heart towards your shin. Aiming again for a bit of a stretch here. As you lean back, release the foot down and come back to the cross of the legs that you had before, placing your hands out in front. So we are folding forward a second time. The opposite leg is now in front. If you feel that's not the case, you can still change that. As you fold forward, let the upper body relax. So you step back up onto your hands, joining me again in a seated position. Stepping your feet out in front is just one way of coming to stand at the short front edge of your mat. If you want to swing your feet over, that's a more elegant version, I think. <laughs> As you find your way to a standing position at the very front end of your mat, I will just turn myself to face the screen so it's easier for you to follow me. Have your feet about hip distance apart. When you're inhaling, let your arms reach up. Have a sigh, bend your knees and hips and swing forwards. Push up through your feet as you inhale. You can extend into a standing back bend. Breath out as you swing it through. Let's do that a few more times. On your inhale, lift and extend. A sigh out as you bend knees and hips. Breathing in. One last round, and then keeping your body low. As you take a hold of the opposite elbows, let the head hang down and sway gently from side to side. Let your hands release to the mat, stepping your right foot back, and placing the right knee onto the mat. Then take a breath in and lift your arms up. And on a breath out, draw the hands to the chest. Now have a little feel into your posture. Is the hip stuck over the knee, the knee over the ankle joint? So we've got a bit of stability there. As we push forward with the left palm, and pull back with the right hand fist. On the exhale, we will change sides. We'll hold for the in breath and push and pull for the out breath. Let's continue that. When you next inhale, lift both of your arms. As you breathe out, bring your hands or fingertips down either side of the front foot. Now tuck the back toes under, lift the knee away from the ground for a runner's lunge, the leg extends, the spine is long. And then you may plant your hands down. If you prefer your knees on the mat, just bring them down. Otherwise, full plank position. So kneeling or full plank. As you inhale here, and then the exhale, leaving the elbows close for landing softly on the mat. On the inhale, lift the head and chest for a cobra. And as you breathe out, release back down. Inhaling, come up onto all fours. Now tuck the toes under, extend the hips up and back puppy. Or lift the knees again off the mat, down at first in dog. Now, if you're in a down dog, or even if you're on your knees, get some movement through the body. There's no jumping around quite yet today, but maybe there's parts of you where you're feeling very tight and dense in the body, have troubles moving. 
Now, that's not moderation, is it? That's a sensation of being unable to move. So these movements here might bring you back into a little bit more physical balance. Now keep your legs walking and take them to the front end of the mat. As you inhale and you arrive a half lift and the breath out to fold forward. Now with the knees bent, lift up all the way. Maybe there's a mini back bend. Maybe there's a lift of the heels away from the ground. And then we're bending the knees and swinging it through with the side. On the inhale, lift up, maybe onto your tippy toes. On the exhale, swing it down. Go for another three. Maybe it's the lift up high and the heels off the ground. That is what you do. Maybe you stay grounded on your feet. After you've completed the last one, you will stay low. The knees are bent. And you're sliding your hands up to the tops of the thighs. As you place the hands down, fingertips pointing in, lengthen your spine as you would for Utkarasana or chair pose. So with the back long, the feet grounded, the hands supporting the shape, lean the weight to your heels and lift all of your toes. With your toes lifted, you might even have a look down and try to touch little toes. And then one toe after the other until finally the big toe lands on the mat. Then release your belly over your thighs as you're folding forward, the hips may lift. We're taking another hold of the elbows, but swapping the arm on top. And I suggest another sway from side to side. Then release the elbows and stepping your left foot back. Lower the knee down to the mat. Take a breath in to lift your arms up. And as you're breathing out, draw the hands to heart center. We'll do the same here. We're watching in our mind's eye, the hip over the knee, the knee over the ankle joint. And we'll push the right palm forward and pull the left fist back. On the out breath, swap. Inhale, hold. Exhale, push and pull. Two more. Then inhale, lifting the arms. Exhale, landing the fingertips down either side of front foot. Tuck the back toes under, lift the knee away from the mat, find the runner's lunge as you inhale. And then a plank, kneeling or full as you breathe out. Holding for the inhalation and lowering on or towards the mat for a flow as you exhale. Inhale for cobra or upper dog. And on your out breaths, beginning the movements back towards a downward facing dog. As you return to this shape, you might notice that there's still movement necessary, but if you can find some stillness after a few movements, you might notice that there are still areas where you're feeling rather heavy or stuck. Notice what little pictures you might be able to use to get you to a more harmonious state in the physical sense. Now walk. Walk the feet again to the front end of your mat. Take a breath in for a half lift as you get there and exhale for a forward fold. Now your knees will be bent as you reach your arms up, maybe even lift your heels away from the ground. But as you breathe out, lower the heels and come into a chair pose with arms extended or hands at the heart. As you breathe in, with the exhale, your belly over your thighs, it's lifting forward fold. 
On the inhale, come to half lift. On the exhale, step the right foot back. You're welcome to practice and repeat on your knees. Or you breathe in to collapse the lunge by bending knees, surrendering upper body. And then on the out breath, rounding to standing. As you inhale, lift arms to complete high lunge. And then draw the hands back to the heart as you're breathing out. Now I'm standing here in a lunge. If you find the lunge is rather challenging for you, take the back foot out to hip distance and ground the foot down in a slightly shorter stance. That's a warrior one stance. We're repeating push and pull. So left hand pushes forward, right fist is pulling back. On the exhale, swap. Inhale, hold. Exhale, push and pull. Two more. As you inhale, lift the back heel, your arms are coming up. As you breathe out, bring the hands down, step into your plank or kneeling plank. On an out breath, come to lie down on your belly. Let your arms lengthen by the side of your body. Touch the palms to the mat so the thumbs are pointing outward. And if that works, take a breath, lift the legs, the hip, the chest, and the arms. Now, while you will hold here, reach actively back towards your toes and your fingers so that neither the arms nor the legs are drifting too far out to the sides. If you're still with me here, take another breath to lift a little bit higher. And then release to the mat, and here comes to the floor for relaxing the body. I now turn my palms up because otherwise there's too much going on in my shoulders. You might feel the same way. As you center the head again, bring the hands back down by your sides. Take a breath in to lift up and a breath out to reach the buttocks towards the heels. As you inhale to come again up onto your hands and knees, raise out to lower your forearms down. You can leave the arms um, extended forward, the hands open and touching the floor, or you can interlace your hands here. I suggest to step the knees a little bit back so you come to a forearm kneeling plank. At the same time, I'm now pulling my tailbone back towards the backs of the knees. Those of you feeling much stronger than this, please tuck your toes under, lift your knees away from the ground, full forearm plank. Option for both, touching your right toes upon the left heel. bringing that leg back down, touching left toes to right heel, bringing the leg back down. If your knees are off the floor, lower them gently. Keep your core engaged and now lower your pelvis down. Untuck your toes and lift your heart forward. We're in a swing pose. Engaging into the tops of the feet so the knees are rising, the pubic bone is moving downwards, the heart forward, and the gaze is rolling to the third eye point. Take two more breaths. When completed, let the elbows drift out, release to the mat. Hands come back by the sides of the ribs. A breath into your knees, and you can tuck the toes under. Either reach up and back for puppy, or take knees away from the ground for a downward facing dog. Please acknowledge again whether you need to move or prefer to be still. 
as you breathe out to release the air, inhaling through the nose, take a pause holding the breath and then a sigh out so the jaw can relax. On your next breath, inhale, raise the right leg up. On the exhale, bring the knee to the chest and aim with your foot forward. Help it there if it's not willing. Lower the back heel to the mat and touch your hands together inside of the front foot. On a breath in, let your right arm extend and then place the hand to the side of the waist. You can leave the left arm, I'm sorry, the left arm that's lifting up, of course, and then the left hand to rest into the side of the waist. You can use the forearm on the thigh or leave your arm extended. More important is to keep the shoulder back. As you are here, nicely open in a side angle pose, feel free to leave yourself in this posture. If you want to go deeper and you would like to use a block, Take the block into your right hand. Step that down in front. Slide or bring the foot in of some sort and maybe lifting the left foot away from the ground. The shoulder is still open. We're approaching a half moon. Those of you who would like to extend the left arm upwards can from here. Gaze might be down or if you need a challenge, you can lift your gaze. Ardha Chandrasana. Then point your toes, land the foot down, raise your arms, warrior two. Now I will rest the back arm, please leave yours extended and look forward over your front hand fingertips. We now have a tendency as we came from there to lean a bit forward. If you choose to pull your feet in, you might get a lift through your posture. And when you're more centered, there's a chance that you actually get to where you're looking. Now release the hands down. Bend into the back knee and bring the front foot in. You can have a tree pose with the big toe on the mat against the lower leg or even help it to the upper inner thigh. The foot is anywhere but against your knee. And if you happen to find some part of balance, touch the hands together in front of the chest. Steady your gaze, ideally straight ahead of you. If you would like to reach your arms up or open them into branches, you may. And if you require a challenge, lift your gaze. On a breath in, lift the knee. And then on a breath out, step back to warrior two. Strong step. Let's lift the arms and the heel, breathing in. On the exhale, bring the hands down and step the foot forward. On an inhale, lengthening your spine. On the out breath, fold. Now bend your knees. Reaching back up, and there might be a lift of the heels. Then lower the heels down and breathe out for a chair pose. Your choice of arms engaging, so the core supporting the spine. On your next elbow, lean the belly to the thighs, raise your hips for forward fold, and breathe in to lengthen into half lift. As you exhale, step the left foot back, either knee to the mat or breathe in to collapse the lunge and breathe out to roll it into standing. As you inhale, raise the arms, high lunge, and then place your hands to the heart as you exhale. So same option, you may keep a lunge, or take the back foot, step it out to hip distance and ground it there. We'll push forward with the right hand and pull back with the left. 
On the exhale, push and pull to change sides. Inhale to hold. Exhale, swap. Two more. Then inhale, lift the heel, the arms. On the exhale, bring the hands down, step it back, plank or kneeling plank. And as you are exhaling, lower on or toward the floor, breathing in for a back bend and breathing out to release to the mat. Now let your arms extend along the sides of the body again. If you want to repeat arms and legs long, have the palms facing upward this time. If you prefer a deeper back bend, you can bend your knees, take a hold of feet or ankles instead. As you inhale, lifting the body. If you've got your feet in the hands, bring the feet deeper into the hands. If arms and legs are long, stretch back again to your toes and to your fingers. If your feet are in your hands, make sure the knees aren't opening, rather keeping them in line with the hips. An experience that is reflected in the lower back. Lifting a little bit high on your next inhale. Only to release the whole posture and the other ear to the mat on the exhale. Allow yourself a few breaths, just resting here. Palms facing up, shoulders dropped towards the mat. Whole body resting, supported. Bringing the head back to center, the hands back down by the sides on the inhale, come to all fours. You can stay here, but you may also tuck toes and lift for a downward facing dog. Now we'll take another short pause in this down dog. Let your knees be rather soft and focus on the curve of your spine. So there is that little tiny back bend in your lumbar. And there's a broadening in the upper back. We'll breathe out, inhaling through the nose, pausing the breath or holding it within the body, and then a sigh out to release it. As your next inhale, lift your left leg up. With the exhale, aim with the foot forward. Lower the back heel again to the mat. Touch palms inside of front foot. And take an inhale to raise the right arm. Now it is the right one. And you will rest the right hand to the side of the waist. Left arm can stay extended and guide the knee or rest to the thigh as we roll the shoulder back. Again, please feel free to stay there. Or you might reach with your left hand for a block, sliding the back foot in and maybe even taking it off the ground. Keep your chest open. If you do lift the foot, flex it actively and maybe reaching up with the right hand as well. Back in a half moon shape as we point the foot, land it down, raise your arms, warrior two, and then draw the feet in towards each other, standing even taller, but your drishti is over the front hand fingertips. Let your hands come to rest. Bend into your back knee. Lean the weight there and slide the foot in and you could keep it simple, the big toe on the floor, or you can find your three variations, sparing out the knee itself. If there's a balance that allows you to touch the hands, do so. And the option again of extending arms upwards or outward into branches. 
Your Rikshasana or tree pose requires a challenge. Allow your gaze to lift. On the inhale, lift your knee. On the exhale, warrior two. As you inhale, lift the heel and raise your arms. On the hour breaths, bring the hands down and your knees down. We will come into an all four stance. Extending the right leg out and swinging the left leg a little bit behind us. A breath in to reach the right arm upwards, a kneeling plank. We will change that kneeling plank as we cross the ankles, sit down on the left side of the buttocks, sliding the left hand behind us and placing the back of the right hand against the knee as we turn away from our feet into a twist. Release that as we bring the hands and the knees back down to the mat. I will just briefly turn myself around so it's easier for you to follow me. As we extend the left leg out onto the mat, right foot swings behind, a breath in to raise the left arm for a kneeling side plank. And then as you cross your ankle, sitting down to the right side, of the buttocks, sliding the hand from the ground behind your back, back off the left hand to the knee. And again, we're twisting away from the knee, uh, toes, feet, <laughs> part of that body that's hanging over on that side. We'll stay on our bottoms and swing the legs all the way out wide. Now, if you've got an uh, excess amount of mat behind you, I suggest to roll that up and sit on that. Otherwise, um, you can also sit on the floor. I'm already creating a bit of a shuffle here on the mat to allow my sitting bones to find the ground. The legs will be out wide. The feet are flexed. We'll bring the hands down in front if that works. Otherwise, have your hands behind as a support. We will inhale and on the exhale, swaying again as we walk our hands a little or a lot forward. I suggest to keep the body moving for quite some time in this forward fold. As there's a good chance to access the posture more deeply, the movement allowing the fascia to move. And with that, we're creating a bit more space within that connective tissue structure. If any of you are quite at ease with the forward fold, you can, of course, rest in it in stillness as well at some point, at least. Allowing your exhalations to lengthen. Touching the hands back down, walking, sliding, swaying to come to a seated position. I suggest to sit now closer to the front end of your mat. You may put your socks back on, even your jumpers, if you feel this way inclined. And then come to sit at the front end of the mat. The soles of the feet are touching. Taking a hold of the outer edges of your feet and stepping the feet in. This is absolutely sufficient. You can do anything from here. For some, the feet might lift away from the ground. Others might even lift the feet or extend the legs. What we will have in common 
is a tucked in chin around the back, bending the knees, rolling right down into happy baby. As you pull your knees down towards the outsides of the shoulders, hold your happy baby still for this moment. As you let go of the legs and the feet, take them out in a V-shape, flexing the feet. Let your hands come to rest towards the inner thighs. And then extend the arms forward, flexing the wrists, fingers spread. Optional movement on the elbows, lift the upper body and push forward. On the inhale, lie back. Exhale, push forward. Inhale, lie back. Maybe the pursed lips come back in as you lift a couple more times. As you release back down onto your mat, take the hands to outside of your legs. Guiding your legs to face upward. The fingers are pointing upward now and letting your shoulders drop to the mat. And then jiggle legs and arms. And jiggling enough so you feel the vibration in the upper back, the shoulders and the hips and the lower back. And maybe the whole back is wiggling at some point on the mat. And then leave everything hanging up there and just enjoy the tingling while it lasts. Then soften your knees toward your chest. Let your arms drift away from your body. And the last movement now is on the inhale, rolling the knees to one side, maybe rolling the head to a side. And out back to pull yourself to center. And inhale to repeat to the other side. And exhale to center and potentially once more to each side. When you are balanced between the sides, let your feet step back down onto the mat and enjoy once more the touch of the feet, the toes to the floor. If you need any support in your resting position, take your feet out wider and let the knees roll inwards so they're resting against each other. The arms remain away from the body, the palms facing up, the shoulders soft on the ground. If you're happy to rest in full Shavasana or use a bolster under the knees, you can do that too, of course. In that case, the legs are rolling open as well. And as you find the stillness in your Shavasana, we'll focus back on moderation or brahmacharya. I never exclude myself when I go into these topics. As we all have a tendency to seek enjoyment and indulge every now and then, at least. But it is a matter of what we are engaging with and how we are digesting that that we are taking in. Be that the food that we eat or be that whatever else we are consuming, such as watching a movie, TV series. Notice when, that, when you do that next time or when you're reflecting on how you ended up feeling at the end when you switched off. Did you feel nourished, whole and relaxed? 
Or were you in a different state of mind that was difficult to digest? In the end, what we are seeking is happiness, happiness and love ultimately. We are trying to find that externally. When we observe ourselves in how we consume, we might find that a lot of the things we are consuming don't really serve us well. They don't make us feel good. Sometimes it is the stepping away to occasionally indulge in it that guides us back into some kind of harmony and balance. But the real joy and happiness lies deep within. When this stillness comes in Shavasana, there is your opportunity right there in the middle of the stillness where you might be able to access that point where you feel joy, love and happiness rising from within. Allow yourself to stay with the stillness for a bit longer. Noticing if your mind got stuck in an idea for moderation in your life. If that is the case, take it on board. If you accessed that moment of joy, keep that with you too. As you slowly deepen your breathing, the body is moving again. And you could deliberately add some more movements to fingers, toes, wrists, ankles, or even stretching out long. And then come and join me in a seated position. Resting the hands back down. Before you bring the palms to join in front of your chest, the thumbs lightly touching the sternum. Bring in a subtle bow of the head to the heart and lift the heart to your hands. Acknowledge and connect to this happy place filled with love and joy within. Where we extend with a light bow to each other. Namaste.